tweeted them publicly, and I've never said this before, but the reason why I tweeted them publicly is because it was re it was a relentless barrage that Blexley was putting online. <laughs> James Simpson 115 says, this is a good one for you, Jack. Can you give us one last update on Peter Blexley or has the communication fully stopped? <sighs> Where to start with Blecko? I think you'll need to explain. So Peter Blexley is, for anyone who hasn't listened to his episodes, he's been on three times, I believe. He's been on three times. So Peter Blexley in the podcast world is... Um, a guest that does the rounds a lot. He goes on a lot of podcasts. He's been on James English, I believe. He's been on. He's been on loads. And we. I'm not saying we were the first podcast he did because I'm sure he did. Oh yeah, definitely. before that. But arguably one of the first big ones he did. Now I could sit here and blow our own trumpet and be like, with this massive podcast, we get these numbers. We boosted his profile. He was actually a fucking phenomenal guest for oh, us. Oh, he was well. incredible. Yeah. yeah, like it was a match made in heaven. It really was because, like, my granddad, he he loves what we do and he watches all the YouTube clips. But he actually found a way to listen to those episodes. Like, he listened to all of them all the way through. I didn't even know my granddad could wear headphones. He's that old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but he 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 loved the Blexley episode. So I have to start by giving Peter Blexley loads of credit. He's um, a great storyteller. Even if some of them might be heightened or a little bit fabricated, which I'm not saying they are, I don't know, right? Yeah. But you would think, because of the nature of the stories, although he has lived a life, you would imagine some of them might be a little bit heightened. Shock, some of the stories I say are a little bit made up. No. If I say they're true, then they are. But sometimes, like, mm -hmm. me giving those two chavs a lift from Tesco, that's true. So I stress that that was true. Other times, like, there might be something that's a little bit embellished because it's funny. But anyway, so he came on. He was lovely. Um, I'd, I found him through Hunted, you know, Channel 4's yeah. Hunted. He was the detective on there. And I'd basically seen True Geordie, who um, everyone will know I take a lot of inspiration from back in the day, like to start the podcast and whatnot. He had an undercover detective on. I thought, this guy's an undercover detective. Let's see if he's got similar stories. So Blexi come on. I think we all got on so well. I remember buzzing after the first episode. We were like... He's he's like he's so similar to the humor that we have. Yeah, like, it worked. The numbers boomed. I never thought because let's face it, he's not necessarily a household name, so you don't yeah don't imagine the numbers are going to be there. It's not a Jack White or a Ricky Gervais, but there were that the, the numbers really were there. And so we invited him on for a second, then we invited him on for a third. I remember after the second time when he came on, we were buzzing as well. We yeah, went, oh, that was even better than the first one. I felt the first one we were very much all about him. Yeah, and then in that second one when it was us we kind of made it also about happy hour a bit and we did like little games with him like where we pretended to be in like a questioning room and stuff so yeah. and i remember having a lot of fun after that and enjoying that even more than the first he was always open to uh to to, to answer any question and i really respect him still now for the, the person that he is but august last year um he was tweeting quite a lot of stuff that I consider to just be wrong about police officers on duty. right? And, and, and let's get this straight. It, it is a debate to be had, right? Yeah. It is a debate to be had. I am very much... So it, to give you a, in a nutshell, it was police officers on duty, uh, LGBTQ plus marches, uh, maybe doing dances with the people that were there, maybe putting high heels on for a 10-second TikTok video and stuff like that. And he was very anti that, and 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 I understand his point of view. Yeah. He's not. He's. He, I, I'm not saying he's homophobic or anything like that. His main point is like they shouldn't be fucking doing this. They're working. But my, where I'm at is, I feel that we live in a society where police are getting so far removed from us. Right. We don't feel connected to the police force and the emergency services that much anymore with the stuff that happened, like all the stuff that's happening in America. We know how fucking corrupt those cops are over there yeah. with the George Floyd and all that fucking atrocious shit. And over here, like there's been some appalling things by the police, like Sarah Everard and stuff like that. Right. The police do not have a fucking good name at the moment. No. Right? And rightfully so for stuff like that. Right. They should be fucking they should be scrutinized for that for those horrific things. So these police officers that we're only seeing bite-sized chunks of, integrating with the community, um, the LGBTQ plus community and all of that stuff, they for me, they're they're 
they're they're sort of bridging that that gap that we're that we're sort of seeing. Yeah, you know what I mean that they are. That's what I think the police should be doing. They should be making the, the people feel comfortable from all different backgrounds, minorities, any anyone that needs to rely on them. They should be there for that. We're seeing a bite-sized chunk, so we don't know if these police officers have been working their ass off all day, and yeah. they're clearly like. They're not on a call there. They're not like someone's going, please help me. I'm getting mugged in an alleyway. Hang on, let me do the Macarena. Yeah, because I remember, I remember a lot of the replies being like, oh, there's someone getting, there'd be someone like a domestic abuse call that you could have been answering at this point. It's like, well, no, they're, they're on duty. They're, their job is to be there in case anything happens exactly. there. If there was a domestic abuse thing happening somewhere else, They'll be that's there. not going to be the police person, people who go to that call. Right, yeah. They're already on their job. Yeah. They might be, I, I don't know how the police force works and maybe... Maybe that means that I'm incorrect in this argument, but I feel like that's a part of their role as well. Right? Yeah. They're, they're on foot, they're patrolling, they're getting involved, they're bringing communities together mm. in a time when we need it the most. Peter Blexey doesn't like that. He's on the other side of the, the argument, and um, this is where it all stemmed, basically. So I remember we saw quite a few of his comments and quite a few of his quote tweets before I ever said anything, because yeah. I wanted to leave it, right? I've had unnecessary beef before in the past with the likes of will any and calyx years ago where i've snapped at something that i don't need to snap at yeah but with this one with peter blexey it it, give, it it said a lot of comments and he was voicing his opinion quite publicly about it so this one on august the 27th said we're here foil Pri we're here at foil pride fest dancing the macarena to engage with the public to show some support for our colleagues in Lynx police happy pride everyone celebrating this weekend fine lovely harmless it is whatever He's quote tweeted and put another twat. Enjoy your flaky meltdown, right? So he's very much of this. You're a snowflake. Yeah, you're a snowflake, which is ironic, isn't it? Because the people who say that often get the most offended when yeah, you call them out on there by things, something else. Right? So after seeing tweet after tweet after tweet, I tweeted him back. Now his argument is, why did I do it publicly? Because to his credit, he's he would be. He would DM me quite often. He'd ask yeah. how I'm doing with my mental health and stuff like that. You cannot fault him as that for that. And as a person, I still respect him today. But so I've tweeted him publicly, and I've never said this before. But the reason why I tweeted him publicly is because it was it was a relentless barrage that Blexley was putting online, a public forum, and I felt he was quite connected with our show. So I've replied, proper gutted with your views recently, mate. In a world where people are rapidly losing faith in the police system for valid reasons such as corruption and killing other humans, I struggle to see how showing some compassion and inclusivity could ever be seen as a bad thing, right? I think that's a fine response. Yeah, yeah I think so. I've not gone, you're a dickhead, fuck off, you're never coming back on the pod again. I've not called him homophobic. Yeah, you've not gone at him at all. You've just explained the positive side of what he was against. Yeah, and, and also I want to put it on record, I don't think he is homophobic. No. Right? He's sharing very specific events there which could be deemed as that but from meeting him he is a nice man yeah, i don't think like i don't think he is i don't think he is um so, so I'm, i was very very safe not to say that then he's replied dear jack i stopped giving a toss about what you think the minute you started taking money to promote gambling it's straight on the defense straight on the defense i heard him say recently on a podcast with these guys um that he'd had a few beers when he said this, and I agree, beers and social media doesn't make, don't mix well. No. Um, so this is in reference to my 888 poker deal, right? And I've spoken about it before. I'm going to keep this very short because I will continue to take that deal. I will not take deals with book bookmakers uh, and casinos and slots. Poker for me, there is an element of gambling. Of course, there is. You can play it for free, and also it's a very skill based game. So the better you get at that the more chance you have of winning. We play a lot as friends. I go to Vegas and I play. I I love the game of poker, right? If you if you disagree, completely fine. But I'm still going to stand by that. I am not going to cave to that. So my response was, you repeatedly asked me to come back on two times since I started with 888 poker. So that's not true. Because yeah. I feel like he's trying to take the moral high ground here. And then I said, also for an ex-cop that drunk drove to a random woman's house and entered her porch stark naked, which is a story that he told us on the pod, said you have a lot to say about the actions of these other police officers. Because I don't think you can take the moral high ground no. when you've done things yourself. Uh, and then it just sort of, it sort of fizzled out a little bit there. Um, I actually... DM'd him in January this year, which is the first 
first sort of... Uh, so what's that, about four or five months later? Four or five months later, some guy, he emailed me and uh, he said, you know this Kevin Powell that um, Blexley's been on the hunt for? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he had some kind of information on... He thought he had some kind of information on Powell. He he messaged me and said, do you have Peter Blexley's email? Like, I've got this. So I just, I just sent him the guy's contact details and the email just to say, there you go, because I still yeah. want to help if I can in, in that way. He put many thanks, Jack. So, and also his response wasn't backing up his claims. It was just going, oh, but you've done something wrong as well. Yeah. So that, so that was weird. Um, and then, so, so some, some, some random person's gone mad to see such a good friendship going down the drain. Obviously something happened behind the scenes, which it didn't. No. Um, he said it really hasn't. Someone indulged in a bit of like attracting virtue signaling of the highest order when they have could have picked up the phone. Now, please excuse me. Places to go, people to see. I said, ah, the old virtue signaling card. I simply disagreed with your point, Peter. I needed to do it public, publicly as you've been a part of Happy Hour and I wanted fans of the pod, and likely both of us to, to know my stance on the matters you've been addressing regularly publicly too. I said, you came, you campaign for so much good drug reform that I am gutted with your recent takes. But as you said, you don't give a toss about my opinions and nor should you be obliged to. For your information, I'll always appreciate your time given to the pod and I'm sure we can hug it out over a game of poker soon. And then Did he, he reply? He put poker no, porn star yes. Which um, is like a little nice ending. But um, yeah, I hope that one day I can meet him and buy him a pint again because I, I I like him as a person he, and and I think we should be able to call our mates out on things that we disagree. Oh with. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but this is the last time I'm ever going to speak about Bexley on here again. Um, but I just want him to know and the listeners to know that it's not that deep. It's not that deep. It's a little playground. Yeah, they've seen it all. Everything they've yeah, seen is it. Seen it all. There's nothing behind the scenes at all. Uh, he thought I should have gone privately. I disagree. And we leave it there, I guess. Yeah, he unfollowed me on Twitter as well. Yeah. So. Oh, well. Don't know why I did. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the police. <laughs> I'm with you, Black. And then silly little march. Yeah, wearing your heels. <laughs> Do your job. <laughs>